Hello everyone, my name is Fox. Let me introduce you to the GPD WinMax 2. This is GPD's latest iteration on their hybrid gaming handheld slash laptop design. This is a form factor that I absolutely love because it does multiple things in one where you get a reasonably good gaming handheld experience and a reasonably good laptop experience. There were a few criticisms that I had talked about with the original GPD WinMax 1. If you go back to my original review there, I ended it off with, I wish that the screen was larger with less bezel. And with that larger, less bezel screen, we could have it be a little bit larger to accommodate a larger, less compromised keyboard uh, and with that larger size also a larger battery those are the three wishes that I ended off my GPD Win Max review and the GPD Win Max 2 has all of those features so this is like every one of my wishes coming true plus plus because we also now have good news it is coming with AMD 6800U. It may be coming a little bit later over the i7-1280P. The i7-1280P Intel's uh, chip will be coming first, and then 6800U later. We'll talk more about that in a little bit. I'm going to kind of frame what this video is going to be like. We're going to be talking about the specs. Thank you very much to Chen over in the GPD Discord for compiling that list for me. Number two, we're going to be going over uh, interweave with that. We're going to talk about size comparisons, and I do compare it to the Steam Deck and size just so you can get a kind of an understanding of how small the uh, GPD Win Max 2 actually is. It's a little bit larger than the the GB Win Max 1, but when you fold the clamshell and put it into a, a backpack, you don't have to have an additional case to protect the device like you do for the Steam Deck. So carrying it around is a lot easier. You have to be less baby it around because the clamshell is turtling the device itself. It has its own defensive mechanisms to protect itself uh, against the elements inside of your backpack. And then three, we're going to be talking about how we actually got to this point, like the history, uh, what all the things that were conspiring in the background, because originally GPU Max 2 had two different directions. It was either going to do an 8.9 inch device and have something ever so slightly larger than the GPU Win Max was as it was. So basically the same, just with less bezel. And then the thing that I was fighting for a lot was getting the 10.1 inch and making the device larger with the larger keyboard. I'm personally thankful that we went with this way, because if you're going to do a device, having compromises in any one of those is a lackluster experience. So just make a device that does both very well, and you're going to have a better experience. So we're going to be talking about that. Let's start off with the specs first. So we're going to take a look at the right side of the device. If we take a look at the right side of the device, on the left-hand side here, you can see one of the quad speakers. So there's four speakers on this device. It is, this is the right side firing speaker. They are no longer downward firing speakers. So we have two front firing, two side firing speakers. Then on the right hand side, you can see two USB 3.2 Gen 2 USB ports. If we could take a look closer to the back with the lid open, you can kind of see this handsome device just kind of sitting here. So we do have a three and a half millimeter audio jack. We have an additional 3.2 Gen 2 USB port. We have an HDMI 2.1 port and then two USB 4 ports. Now, it's important to note here that on the Intel i7-1280p version, as well as the AMD 6800U version, where it says USB 4 port right there, that is the Thunderbolt port for all intents and purposes. So on Intel, that is where you'll plug in for eGPU support, as well as on the AMD 6800U. That is where you'll plug in, and it will support eGPU on AMD 6800U. So regardless of which model you're going to get, you will have eGPU support going forward. This is the back of the device. And if we take a look on the bottom left here, you can actually see the two slots for what look like where you put the covers for the controls. I'm going to go ahead and jump ahead real quick. So this is what the device looks like with the covers off of the device. And if we take a look at the next one, you can actually see where the covers go to cover the game controller portion of it. So if you wanted the device to look exclusively like a laptop, if you were embarrassed or whatever about showcasing what the device looks like with game controls out, or if you wanted to be in office and use it as a laptop exclusively, you have this feature where you can actually cover the controls and then masquerade as it's just a very small UMPC. So if we go back here, you can actually see where those slots go, where you can actually stow away and store those magnetic covers. Uh, I will have to get confirmation here, but that's what that really looks like to me. I know that there was a slot when I was talking with GPD about this, and I believe that's where they were. I remember them being somewhere else in earlier renders, but I guess that this is where they are now. Now, if we take a look at the bottom of the device, we can see the full range of the L2 and R2 analogs that are there. Additionally, you can see two additional buttons. Now, this is very similar to the Win 3 that had buttons on the back, back buttons. These are fully configurable to do whatever you want them to do via software that GPD creates. This was working on the GPD Win 3, and now it's going on to the GPD Win Max 2. This actually writes directly to the firmware of the chip itself, so that even without the software running, these buttons are configured to be macroed to whatever you want to do. On the left-hand side over here, we have the LTE module. Now, it doesn't come built in, but you can put LTE in here. So if you want to go about and have cellular service, this is where the LTE part will go. On the right-hand side, we have a 2230 expandable slot, so you don't have to fully open up the device to increase the storage. There is additionally a 2280 stick that is inside of the device itself. That comes in one terabyte and two terabyte configurations from GPD at the current time. 
And then if we look on the left hand side of the device, you can clearly see where the magnetic cover is and when it's slotted in and what that looks like when the device is fully closed. We have A2 support on the micro SD slot as well as SD 4.0 on the full SD slot. So we have two SD cards there, one full, one micro SD. And again, you can see the left firing speaker on the left side. And then if we go into the front of the device, you can see the out of the remainder of the four speakers, the two front firing speakers, as well as right here being the fingerprint sensor, as well as the on off button. And here's what the device looks like when opened up. Now, this is sensational. They packed in everything in this to make it a full featured laptop as well. They included a nose cam in here. This was something that I know that I wasn't really asking for, and I was hoping that it was going to be there. I'm glad it is here. Nose cams aren't the best. I know a lot of people don't like the direction of nose cams. I'm sure the quality of the, the camera itself isn't going to be fantastic but any webcam is better than no webcam so I'm glad that it's there now if we take a look at the analog sticks themselves these are GB's first use of hall sensors for the analog sticks the Ioneo next was the first in the market with hall based analog sensors now there is a company that is making these as well I don't know if GB is using that company but these are the same type of basic principle when you move the analog stick around there are magnets that determine the sensitivity of how much you're going in analog so from zero to one so this is to kind of get away from the problems that a lot of people have with stick drift uh, hall based sensors will get around this really good so it's really cool that these are here additionally the vita d-pad is making its appearance once again i'm pretty happy that that's still there you can see the the mouse controller switch is now on the front of the device so if you wanted to switch that over to mouse mode the analog sticks become a hardware based mouse as far as the operating system is concerned and the analog is a mouse so to speak and then the triggers are left and right click respectively you can see select start and menu on the right hand side. Now that's a bit of a stretch. I don't know how I feel about its placement, but I know that where else are you really going to be putting this on there? So for what it's worth, it's fine. It's probably one of the only criticisms I can really say about the device at the moment. Now, one thing you can't see here is that GPD is including a gyroscope in the GPD Max 2. So GPD says it's a three plus three, six axis gyroscope. I don't know what that actually means. It will remain to be seen how that works in practice. I will have to get back to you when I actually try it in hand. Now there is a lot going on with this display. It is awesome. So first it is a landscape based display. It is not portrait. Just to give you an idea, even on the Steam Deck, the actual screen that's on here is actually oriented like this. It's a tablet based display that is on the Steam Deck. What it's like on the WinMax 2 is it's landscape. And what that means is that when you try to play older games, you no longer need to put fixes in, especially on Windows. On, on Linux, this is a problem, especially on Steam West. Things are already getting converted in the background, so there is no problems. But on Windows, this was a problem for portrait-based displays. We no longer have that issue. It is a landscape-based display. All of those issues playing DirectX 8 and older games, out, gone. They no longer exist. So that's a huge plus. On top of that, it is a full touch screen display. I believe it's 10 point touch, but it has it has active pen support. Same as the Pocket 3 with, with 4,096 levels of pen pressure support. So an active pen will work on this display with tons of pen pressure support. So that's more than I thought was actually going to be there. So for people that actually wanted to have full pen support on there, it's there. Additionally, the resolution is rather large, but because of upscaling technologies like FSR, uh, Magpie, or even uh, lossless scaling that is on the Steam Store, there are many different types of applications where we can upscale. So we can run the game at lower resolutions than upscale. That's going to be very necessary on the i7-1280p. It's also going to be necessary on the 6800U. There is very few modern games that are going to be able to run at this crazy 2560 by 1600 resolution. So you will have to upscale a lot of modern games, but older games you will be able to run at this ridiculous resolution pretty well. Now, the only thing not specified here that we haven't talked about completely yet is that for the i7-1280p versus the AMD 6800U, they do come in two different RAM configurations. First, uh, the Intel i7-1280p will run at 5200 megatransfers and the AMD 6800U will run at 6400 megatransfers. Uh, basically, the RAM is faster on the AMD 6800U to accompany the better GPU that's on the 6800U. For my money, I would rather wait for the 6800U version of the GPU Win Max 2. That is going to be, by large, my personal favorite device that I'm personally waiting for. Additionally, there are configurations and size capacity of the RAM. It will come in 16 gigs as well as 32 gigs of RAM. Specifically, for people that are looking for this to be usable as a laptop, having 32 gigs of RAM makes it far better for productivity. I'm glad that I was able to. That was like a wish list feature that I just kind of threw out there like saying i hope 32 gigs is available and it is there so it makes it far more of a complete productivity laptop this is what the device looks like when it's closed uh when the this is what the device looks like when you cover the game pads it looks it looks sick <laughs> i really i i want this device so bad it's crazy 
uh, this last image, this is Faust's keyboard. All right, so we we owe Faust a lot here. Okay, because you guys didn't see that, but uh, me and the mod team over in GPD Discord, we saw a lot of the behind the scenes stuff and him like <laughs> constantly making iterations. I can't tell you how many different iterations of the keyboard we saw. Now, you have to keep in mind, you're like, you're looking at this keyboard and you're like, what's the big deal? It's just, it looks like a, a regular keyboard. Trying to, all right, so there's differences that we have to do here because there's value engineering of what has to come in here. You have to think about the size of the keycaps and how large they are and the dimensions of them because you don't want to create a bunch of custom keys because you want to make molds of as few keys as possible because if you have a whole bunch of keys that you're going to have, it just becomes convoluted. The cost goes up because you're making more molds and then getting different, it becomes a headache logistics wise. It's easier to have keycaps that are similar size across the board and have fewer that are drastically changing, right? So that is one aspect that Faust had to work around. Additionally, there was a lot of back and forth between the spacing between the keys. So there was like five millimeter spacing. Now we're at four millimeter spacing. There's like a lot of back and forth at what happened here to make it okay for like manufacturing purposes. So there's a lot going in here and Faust was uh, Faust deserves all the credit here. So thank you very much, Faust, for all the hard work you did here. We are all going to benefit from the hard work on that you've done in iterating with it. And then GPD for even working with Faust to kind of get this through. So uh, Faust is the main man here. He quarterbacked this entire thing. Thank you so much for that. Uh, this is such a, an excellent keyboard. And all of the mod team were like constantly talking Faust. Faust had lots of different ideas. Also different ideas for what he wanted to have one of the magnetic pads be a touchpad, like so that you can use it. Uh, so there's lots of things that didn't make to the final drawing board. If we kind of cap this off, we've I've seen lots of different renders. We've been talking about the WinMax 2 for a long time now, but I'm glad that we can finally talk about it with you, uh, and we can show pictures and what it actually looks like so a lot of everyone can see it. Uh, we've known for a while. I am so looking forward to the 6800U version of the WinMax 2. This has been a long time coming. There was an 8.9-inch screen that was very much like the uh, P2 Max. So the P2 Max screen was one of the candidates screen to be for the GPU WinMax 2. What was nice about the P2 Max screen was that was also landscape. So that was kind of one of the reasons why we really wanted that one as well. Uh, and that was a good trade-off. So when they said they were going to go with that 8.9 inch, I was I was personally, I was a little upset because I would have preferred a larger screen to have a large keyboard, but I understood the landscape aspect of it. But I'm glad that we arran uh, arrived where we arrived today. This is the perfect hybrid device. I really couldn't have asked for more. I'm excited to see where this goes and comes out. This still has a lot of time yet to come out, so this is still early news yet. Uh, don't anticipate for like a crowdfunding thing to happen for months yet. So this is still very early days. It should have been like a what we know so far, and it should have been a slow burn up, but it's just like you're getting all the information at once. This is introduced in the GPD WinMax 2. As always, guys, thank you for your time, and thanks for watching.